Okay, so this is section 9.2. Now we're going to get into the actual different types of differential equations and what we what we can do with them. Excuse me. Um, 9.2 actually has two different sections in here. The first one we're going to talk about is slope fields. Um, the interesting thing about slope fields is that you actually see this used um, kind of heavily, actually, in, in everyday life. Um, and when we get to the end of what we're doing here, I might give you an example of where you see this. Um, but a slope field is basically a graphical representation of a differential equation. So the idea is, is that we're going to be able to create or be given graphs that are these things which are called slope fields. And those are going to actually be able to give us somewhat of a sense of what the original function was. You'll understand, hopefully, as we start to go through this. But just know that slope fields are graphical. So a slope field, or also called a direction field, for a differential equation is an approximate graph of the family of functions that represent the solutions to the differential equation. It's found by marking small tangent lines at each coordinate to represent the slope at that coordinate. The line segments provide a visual perspective of the shape of the solution to the differential equation. Again, once we do one of the one or two of these, you'll understand exactly what that means. So our first task is just to learn how to actually do a slope field. So we're going to draw the slope field for the differential equation, which is given by dy over dx equals negative x over y. We're going to do that by substituting different ordered pairs into the differential equation and then drawing small tangent lines on the next page to represent the slope at that coordinate. So I've given you a nice big chart here. So. Um, if you want to try and do this on your own, you might want to pause this um, and go ahead and see if you can find all the slopes. I'm at least going to get you started, and I'm also going to add something because for whatever reason, I just have never fixed this. Um, there are two points which are kind of critical to this that are missing, and the points I'm going to add those to the bottom are 1, 0, and then over here, 0, negative 1. So it's just two additional points. So I'll walk you through the first couple, and then again, you might want to pause it because after I walk you through the first couple here, um, all the rest of them are just going to appear at once because I'm going to pause my video, and I'm just going to write them all up there instead of you watching me write every single one of these out. So our first um, ordered pair is the point zero, 0, Now, if I plug zero, 0, back into my differential equation. So plug 0 in for x and 0 in for y. I get 0 divided by 0. Okay, as we know, 0 divided by 0 does not exist. It's not even undefined. It's just not there. I mean, so it's just a does not exist. So right here, I'm going to write does not exist. Now, that's the only time that's going to happen. Now, something like um, 0, 1 to the right here. I'm moving left to right. 0, 1, that means I'm going to plug 0 in for x and 1 in for y. Well, if I plug 0 in for x, I'm going to get negative 0, which is still 0, over top of 1. That just gives you a slope of 0. Okay, now I'm going to move to the lower left. So now I'm going to go negative 2, 0. So now I'm going to plug negative 2 in for x and 0 in for y. Now I have a number other than 0 divided by 0. That's an undefined slope. Okay, the numerator here was a number other than zero. The denominator is zero. So that's an undefined slope. And hopefully you remember from um, when you did slopes that that's just a vertical slope. It's undefined. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and let you guys try and figure out the rest of these. And once again, I'm just going to go ahead and fill everything in. So again, if you want to um, try and make sure that you can just kind of uh, put all these things in, and take a couple minutes, you might want to pause it right here. Okay, so hopefully um, you got all those values correct. Here they all are, um, just in order to save time again and ha not have me writing everything out and you watching me write it all out, there it is. So um, you can again pause it if you need to. I'm going to move on to the next page because now we're going to take all of these slope values at the specific ordered pairs and we're going to sketch them on this page. So unfortunately I could not put 
um, the little dots on here. Normally what you would see if you had a slope field that you had to create yourself is you would see a bunch of dots. So like this one right here would represent one zero, two zero, zero one, zero two, and so on. So you are gonna wanna space these out and try to do it as equally as possible. You happen to have graph paper, that'd be even better, um, but I didn't have a way to do it in this case. Notice on the um, ordered pairs from the previous page, you also had points like one, 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 two, I'm sorry, two, one, one, two, two, two. So we have to put a dot in all of these places. Basically, we are gonna form a nice little rectangular box of dots that we're gonna use here. And this will not be perfect, but it will be plenty enough to be able to give you the general concept. Notice I did not put a dot at zero, zero because nothing exists at zero, zero. It's literally a does not exist. So now if we're to go back and forth, I'm only gonna do this a couple of times. If we go back and forth between the pages here and we look at, okay, so I'm just gonna kind of go down the list here. Um, negative two, zero, because I'm not worried about zero, zero. At negative two, zero, I have an undefined slope. So how are we gonna do that? First of all, we'll find negative two, zero, and an undefined slope is a vertical slope. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a little tangent line that's vertical. Okay, we'll go back to the previous page. It's a little tedious to do it this way because of the fact that we don't have this written down. You will have it written down, but I don't. Negative one, zero, also undefined. So at negative one, zero, vertical slope. One of the things I wanna show you, obviously a zero slope would be um, a horizontal slope. And as a matter of fact, that's gonna occur, I believe at zero, one, zero, two, zero, negative one, and zero, negative two. I believe those are all zero slopes. So you can see how I made those horizontal. Um, when it comes to slope fields, a slope of one would be a rise over run of one over one. So it'd be like up one over one. Um, so we're gonna use, in this case, the point negative two, negative two. That's a slope of negative one. So at the point negative two, negative two, which is down here, we get a slope of negative one. A slope of negative one should be a rise over run of approximately, and this is just an approximation of one. That looks like it's about a 45 degree angle. Um, what you're gonna see, and I'm only gonna do this for one other one, is I believe if we look at the point negative one, negative two, neg yeah, negative one, negative two, we now get a slope of negative one half. That should be a slope which is less steep, but still in the negative direction than negative one was. So that's going to be a slope which is less steep, but still in the negative direction. So I'm gonna flatten it out just a little bit and it would look something like that. Whoops, didn't mean to, my hand actually made that scribble over there. All right, so go ahead and see if now you can kind of, oh, and what I was gonna mention, I'm sorry, is that that point that with the negative one half has to be less steep relative to the negative one slope. So the fact that you may or may not make a negative one slope exactly, you may have drawn it a little steeper or a little less steep than what I did. Um, as long as your negative one half, half is less steep than your negative one slope, and like if you have a negative two, it should be more steep than your negative one slope, um, then you're going to be doing okay. Um, so go ahead and see if you can fill out all the rest of the dots and hopefully after you've done that you're going to have an idea of what this thing looks like. Um, um, again, you might want to pause this here if you're going to try it yourself. If not, the whole thing's going to appear in just a second for you guys. Okay, so there it is. Hopefully you had a chance to pause it and sketch it, and hopefully your sketch looks pretty close to that, uh, assuming that you didn't make any silly mistakes there. Um, Hopefully you can kind of tell what this is looking like, but if not, that's what the next parts of these questions are for. So it says start at the point two zero. So I'm gonna pick a different color, I'll pick orange here. Start at the point two zero, which is right here. 
draw a graph representing the particular solution of the differential equation which contains that point. The graph should be parallel to the slope lines and be some sort of average of the slopes if it goes between lines. What geometrical figure does it um, seem to be? So the idea is as we start to try and trace what this graph looks like, you should kind of start to see what the flow is and stay parallel to the slope lines. So as I start to come down, I'm going to try and stay parallel to the, each slope line that I pass. Or if I go in between, it should be somewhat of an average, like it says there. Um, yeah. Parallel. Whoops, come on. My hand keeps writing on a different part of this, which is why it's stopping writing here. Stay parallel, come on, parallel, 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 staying parallel, trying to stay parallel to the best of my ability. Goes in between, that's fine. It's not going to be perfect, but I am hoping that by staying parallel, you all can see what this is supposed to be. To me, this looks like it is just a circle. And they call it a particular solution to the differential equation because it goes through a specific point. We had a one specific point, which was that point two zero. And then if we look at the third question here, start at the point one one and draw another particular solution. So that just means it's some other solution, some other representation of the graph. What was the point one one? Okay. So now we'll start at the point one one, which is right here. And now I'm going to stay parallel as best I can. Parallel, 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 all the way around. And that would be a general representation of that particular solution. And the question says, if you do that, how is it related to the previous one? It should be relatively obvious, even though my drawings are not the best, that that is just another circle. It is a smaller circle. And as a matter of fact, these are what are known as concentric circles, meaning they have the same center and they start to grow bigger and or smaller depending on which way you go. The further you go out, they're bigger. The further you go in, they're smaller. <clears throat> and if you really remember, and I seriously doubt most of you will, when we did implicit derivatives a long time ago, the derivative of a circle, any circle that was centered at the origin, was negative x over y. So that's just something to think about because that's what we got this differential equation from. Okay, let's move on. So hopefully now you have somewhat of an idea what it's like to draw um, a differential equation. Some of these are going to be relatively easy and they should be intuitive because you should know what the antiderivatives are, but I'm going to show why this works. So in number one it says draw a sketch for each differential equation. The differential equation in number one is dy over dx equals one. So for every x value that I, excuse me, for every ordered pair that I pick, the slope is one. There's no x, there's no y to plug anything into. So it really doesn't matter where it is. So anywhere along the x-axis, the slope is a slope of 1. Doesn't matter. Anywhere on the y-axis, the slope is a slope of 1. At any point, the slope is always 1. It really doesn't make any difference because there is nothing to plug into it. So it's telling us literally that the slope is always one. Now, if you think about it and you look at what I have drawn there, it's a family of functions. It looks like it is a family of functions of linear equations with a slope of one. <clears throat> Okay, so let's look at number two. This time we actually do have something to plug into. So it's telling us that dy over dx is x. So it is going to change with respect to x. So let's see, when x is zero, I should have a slope of zero. When x is zero, I should have a slope of zero. That is anywhere up and down 
the y-axis. That's when x is 0. I'm going to have a slope of 0. When x is 1, that's the vertical line where x is 1, I should have a slope of 1. So now I'm going to have a bunch of 1 slopes. And then when x is 2, they should be even steeper. But we can also go in the negative direction. So now when x is negative 1, they should be negative 1 slopes. So it should be approximately the same slope as the ones with the 1, just in the negative direction. And then when x is negative 2, they're going to be negative 2 slopes, so steeper. And again, if you look at that, and you were to pick one particular place to start and stay parallel, this looks like, to me, a family of functions of parabolas. Anywhere you draw this line, family of functions of parabolas. And that's what it is. Okay, and then the last one, if dy dx equals cosine of x, I'm only going to deal with the positive side, but we know that cosine goes, you know, forever left and right. This time we're just going to talk about this in terms of trig, but if cosine, if x is 0, cosine is 1. And that's going to be up and down the x-axis, so I'm going to have a slope of 1 right here. Sorry, not up and down the x-axis, up and down the y-axis, a slope of 1. Um, the next best value to pick would probably be pi halves. This cosine at pi halves is zero. So that means at pi halves, we're going to have a whole bunch of zeros. At pi, we're going to have, see cosine of pi is negative one. So we're going to have a bunch of negative ones. You may or may or may not have already guessed what this is going to do eventually. At three pi halves, we're going to have a bunch of zero slopes. And then at 2 pi, we're back around to 1 slopes. And you might have already guessed that all of these things look something like sine functions. It just happens to be that that's what they all are. Staying parallel. All these things are sine functions. Now, let's think about why that is. These are all things we can actually take antiderivatives of, and you might have already thought of that in the beginning. Okay, antiderivative of dy over dx is simply y equals x plus c. There is your line, y equals x. That's exactly what all those things are. dy over dx equals x. The antiderivative would be y equals 1 half x squared plus c. Again, a family of functions of parabolas. That's exactly what we've got there. And then for the last one, the antiderivative of dy over dx equals cosine x is y equals sine of x plus c. So there you go. That's how you would look at some of those things and realize that, okay, the slope fields actually do. When I'm given the differential equation, if I create the slope field, it's going to give me somewhat of an idea of what the original function looked like or what the original function was graphical representations of family of functions. Okay, I believe all of the points that we need are here for this next one. Um, I don't think we have to change anything because it used to be that I had a typo on here, but I think I fixed it, so I think we're good. So again, what I would suggest doing is going ahead and seeing if you can figure all these things out. The one thing I am going to do is I'm going to plot all the dots here. So I know I'm going to go out as far as one in every direction. So I'm going to have to go to one in every direction. And we should have nine total points, which it looks like I do here. So go ahead and see if you can figure out all the slopes. Pause the video. See if you can sketch the graph and then uh, unpause it here. And when you come back, you should see what it looks like. And hopefully you've gotten it correct. All right, and here we go. Hopefully you got these all correct. Got your slopes correct by putting all the um, points back into the original uh, differential equation. And there is your slope field. Now, if you can actually tell me what that thing is doing just by looking at those particular nine points in this case, that would be very good because this just 
does not seem to have any kind of a particular pattern to me right here. You actually have to use many, many more points to actually see what the sketch of this one looks like. This is not something you'd be able to tell easily. But that's it um, for this video. We're going to come back with a second video, which will be much, much shorter comparatively. Should be definitely less than 10 minutes.